Recall from earlier lessons that I stated that you have to give a pointer a data type so that C knows what you will be pointing to. For example, you have to say care star if you want it to be a pointer to the data type care or character. Now why is that? Because if I told you give me what is that memory address 1000, you would not know how many bits to give me. In other words, the data type of a pointer is useful in part because it tells you how much we plan to see and work with at once. If we have a pointer of data type care, then we expect to see and work with data in increments of one byte at a time. Now take a look at this code from our previous example. When you say ampersand my string, you are saying something rather interesting. You are saying that you want the memory address of the whole array of the entire string of text hello reddit, not just the memory address of the first element. Now that might be confusing to you and I'll get into exactly what that means. So first of all, when you're talking about an array like a string of text hello reddit, you know of course that this array has multiple characters and each character has its own memory address so then how can you have the memory address of the whole element? Well the answer is you can't but you can imagine that you do. You can imagine that there's one memory address that contains the entire string of text. You could also imagine that there's a special data type that is not character but is rather multiple characters. In other words you can imagine that there's a data type which works by having 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, plus the null termination characters 13. You could imagine that there is a data type for 13 characters in a row. When you say ampersand my string like this, you're in fact treating this memory address as if it is the memory address of 13 characters. So if you were doing pointer arithmetic, for example, and you added 1, you're going to be adding, in fact, 13. Now let's take a look at that in action. First we're going to look at the memory address of ampersand my string. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this program. And you see here it's 28FEFF. All right, now what happens if we add one to that memory address? Let's go ahead and run the same line of code. And we're going to say plus one. I know those parentheses are redundant. But take a look at what memory address we get. We go from FEFF -F -F to FF0C. Obviously that's not one more byte in memory. Now take a look at what happens if we were to do this the way we did in the previous lesson. Now take a look. We go from FEFF -F -F to FF00. In other words, we've only gone one more byte. And just to make that a little bit more clear, let's go ahead and add a few bytes. So we'll go plus two and plus three and take a look. And you can clearly see that we're incrementing one byte at a time. The same thing is true if we do this. and it should be self-evident. But again, you can see here that we're incrementing one byte at a time. Whereas when we write this line of code, we get the same memory address, but as soon as we start doing pointer arithmetic to it, we're not getting one more byte in memory, we're getting 13 more bytes in memory because what we are in fact telling C when we write this is we want to look at the entire 
array at once. Therefore, when we're going to be doing pointer arithmetic, C is going to assume we want to look at another array that is structured exactly the same. In other words, we are effectively telling C, I want to see the entire array with a single pointer, not just one character at a time. And all this really means is that when we plan to read from a memory address, we will not be asking for 8 bits, which would be one character, but we're going to be asking for however large the array itself is. In our example, hello reddit and the null termination character is exactly 13 bytes. Therefore, by saying ampersand my string, we are telling C, I want a pointer which is pointing to the start of the array, and I want to look at 13 bytes at a time. And that's the difference between writing this versus either writing this or writing this, like you saw in the previous lesson. So let's now wrap up this lesson by looking at three specific cases. If we write my pointer equals my string, and we assume that my pointer is a pointer and my string is an array, then that means we want to assign the memory address of my string into my pointer, and my pointer will expect to see one element of the array at a time because the array itself was created as a single dimensional array of characters. In this case, one character at a time. If we were to write this, then we are saying assign the memory address of the first element of my string into my pointer and then my pointer will expect to see one element of the array at a time. In other words, one character at a time. So this first example and the second example are the same thing. However, if we write this, now what we are saying is fundamentally different. Now we are saying to assign the memory address of my string into my pointer. Now keep in mind, all three of these are going to put the exact same memory address into my pointer. But this time, the pointer will be looking at the length of the entire array each time it is used. So when you're doing pointer arithmetic, for example, you're no longer going to be incrementing one character at a time, and that means your program is going to be very different depending on which of these examples you choose. Therefore, do not use this type of syntax to get the address of an array when you plan to go through that array one element at a time. If all you're doing is getting the memory address of the array, then you're fine. Or if your intention is actually to treat that as a data type that is the size of the array, then you're also fine. Just make sure that's what you're doing. In most cases, you are going to want to use this here, although using this is the exact same thing. All right, so at this stage, everything that we've covered so far involving pointers should make sense to you. If anything is unclear, please ask questions. All of the future lessons in this course will heavily rely on you having mastered everything up until this point. That concludes this unit, and I'll see you in the next lesson.